be uh, Daniel Berger, and uh, he will speak about uh, Antegal. Um, he is a virtualization uh, software guy, but uh, today he will uh, speak about a project more uh, linked with his hobbies, the photography. Let's uh, applause Daniel Berger. Hi, so um, as you just heard, I'm here to talk to you about a photography program that I work on in my spare time um, called Entangle. Um, and um, at its very simplest, this is basically just a way to control your digital camera from a laptop. Um, when I say digital camera, I typically mean an SLR camera, Nikon, Canon are uh, the best supported. Um, you used to be able to get some compact cameras that you could control from the computer, but um, the lovely people at Canon have seen fit to cripple their firmware so that you can no longer um, no longer control it from the, from the computer. Um, so mostly SLR digital cameras are what this program works with. Come on. I'm sorry, technical trouble? That's okay. Um, so, what I consider the four main um, usage scenarios for this uh, program are. Um, the first one, the reason why I started developing it um, was to be able to do macro photography um, at home. If you're, doing, if, you're, if you're at all familiar with macro photography, um, you'll know that one of the challenges is getting the focus point just right, because you've got a very narrow field of focus. Um, and if you look at the back of your camera on the little LCD screen, it's quite hard to tell whether you've done that right or not. Um, so it's much, much easier if you can have your images immediately displayed on your huge laptop screen or desktop screen, um, so you can see the focus point and judge it um, straight away. Um, the second, second scenario, um, studio model photography. Um, this was uh, something I um, saw in a photography club that I belonged to. Um, they were doing a live, um, live model shoot on stage um, with, an, with an equivalent program to this. Um, so you could see the shots as they were, as they were taking them. Um, since, since I started writing this program, um, to my surprise, I got a number of people turning up and saying that uh, they're using it to do stop motion animation. Um, so that's, that's uh, one, one useful use case you can have. And finally, um, astrophotography. Um, I've just recently started doing a bit of astrophotography. Um, and again, it's useful because you want to be able to um, see the images you're taking on a big screen. Because when you're taking pictures of the night sky, the stars are a tiny little spot um, on the nights on, on your um, image. And so it's going to take, it's, you're not going to be able to see the stars on the little LCD screen on the back of your camera. Um, so it's nice to have your, your image displayed on a, on a big screen right away. Um, so the core, the core capabilities of the program. Um, start off with, if you've got your camera connected to the laptop via a USB cable, you press the shutter on the camera and the image immediately downloads to the laptop and gets displayed. Um, but you can also trigger the shutter directly from the laptop. Um, you can turn on the live, live preview mode if your camera supports that. So you see a continuously refreshing um, view of what your camera sees um, at, I don't know, 15 frames a second, as, basically as fast as the camera will download the images, um, will we'll display it on, on, the, on the screen. You can control a variety of the camera settings. This kind of depends on what camera you've got, but on a, on a decent quality SLR camera from Canon or Nikon, you can basically control every possible setting um, from, the, from the laptop. Um, being a photography program, color management is, a, is of course um, important. So this, this has color management built in. And again, of course, we support all the various raw file formats um, the cameras produce. Um, this monitor is getting very annoying, but it'll come back in a second, I hope. Um, 
um, the architecture. The program is kind of. I'll carry on talking anyway. The program is split into um, kind of two two separate pieces. Um, what I call the back end, which is all the interaction with the camera. Um, this this uses um, libg photo which is a which is an open source library for controlling digital cameras so that does all that does all the guts of the communication with the camera um, gdk pixbuff is a library i use for just manipulating the images we download um, lcms is a uh, is a library i use for doing the color management um, stuff and um, GXIV, um, which is a library for extracting metadata from image files. And finally, LibRAW for, for processing all the uh, raw files you download off the camera. Um, then the second part of the, the code base is uh, what I call the front end. So at the moment, this is a GTK3 desktop application. Um, the reason, as you might imagine, for doing the split between the back end and the front end is that eventually there will be multiple front ends. Um, the one that I've got in mind as the second alternative would be a um, GIMP plugin. So you could take uh, shots directly from GIMP and have them download straight into straight into your image editing program. Um, I'll carry on talking anyway. Um, in the front end, um, it makes use of a um, recent features in GTK, um, and well, more specifically in GObject. Um, it uses something called GObject introspection, which is a way of taking um, C code and accessing it from more or less any dynamic language that you might care to use. So you can access all the C APIs from JavaScript, Perl, Python, um, and um, a handful of others. Um, so we we make use of this technology to allow you to write um, plugins for the application. So end users can customize um, customize the, the um, graphical display um, and set up the set up um, scripting of the UI or, or any kind of fancy features they, they might wish to might wish to have. So uh, the programs that are, I mean, I've, I've been working on the program on and off for uh, a couple of years, but it's still, the, the functionality is at a fairly basic level, and there's a bunch of ideas I've got uh, for things that I'd like to work on. Um, these, these things are um, ideas for plugins that I'd like to, to write. Um, if you've used uh, if you use digital cameras, you'll know there's, there's most of them have a, a feature called um, auto bracketing. Um, so I'd like to be able to do a similar kind of thing from the laptop, but not just restricted to doing um, not just restricted to um, bracketing the exposure values. You could bracket the um, ISO sensitivity or the aperture of the camera, or even bracket um, different flash power levels. Um, or even some combination of all, all three or four of the different settings there. Um, another another um, plugin I'd like to write um, to help in the macro world is uh, something to do focus stacking. And this is an idea where you um, you take a series of ima macro images and tune the focus point to a different um, focal distance between each shot, and then you can get um, then you can combine all these images um, in GIMP afterwards to create um, one which has a really um, wide depth of field to it um, that you wouldn't be able to get with a single shot. Um, and the last, the last idea I've got there is um, kind of a batch mode, which is to just uh, take a, series, a whole series of shots, timed exposures, a timed gap between each shot. This is kind of a useful thing you need to do if you're doing astrophotography, and you want to take um, you want to take a hundred shots spread over the course of an hour or two. Um, on the UI side of things, um, I mentioned a few minutes ago I'd like to be able to write a um, GIMP plugin um, for controlling controlling the camera directly from GIMP. Um, 
the camera support so far is all done over USB, um, because mostly because that's the type of camera that I've got as a USB controlled one, but some of the newer Nikon and Canon SLRs have the ability to control them um, directly over Wi-Fi using um, IP, so it would be nice to have um, support for, for making those work. Um, I'd like to do a bit of um, user interface simplification and customization work um, on, on the program because um, if we get to see a demo in a second, you'll see some of the UI bits are, are suboptimal. So let's, uh, let's see if a demo is actually going to work. Um, the projector is being a bit cursed, um, but you never know. We'll give it a go. Let's, uh, come on. Ah, two monitors. No, not two monitors. <laughs> Well, this is, uh, let me see if I can get it up in uh, mirrored, although it's not going to mirror unless it actually detects both of them. Um, how are we doing on time? It's not even detecting the second monitor with this cable. Yeah. Oh well, um, looks like you don't get to have a live demo, but um, what I can say is we've got a, a website um, called Entangle Photo, that's entangle-photo.org. Um, on the website um, you'll find a link to the mailing lists, you find a link to the, to the Git code repository. Um, aha, we've got a different cable. Not on the video. <laughs> <laughs> it's um. Let's see if we can get it working in mirrored mode. Oh well, that's no. I'll just say, go to, go to the website, entanglephoto.org. You'll see a bunch of screenshots um, of the program. You'll find links to the code. Um, if you're using um, um, Fedora or Ubuntu or Debian, you can. Um, the software's already in the repositories there, so you can just install it and uh, try it out with your digital cameras. Um, Sorry you don't get to see a live demo, but uh, this projector setup is just being mental. Um, so, um, thank you very much, and if you've got any questions, um, shout them out. We have a question here. Uh, so you said the, the main interface for interfacing with the cameras is over USB. Yeah. Uh, with like Android phones and PTP, is that enough to be able to use those with Entangle, or not? Um, it uses, I mean, it, it uses libg Photo, and libg Photo speaks the PTP protocol. Um, so if, if, I don't know, if Android devices expose some, their camera feature as um, PTP, but if, if they did, then in theory that would work with libg Photo. Cool, I'll try that. With then. Entangle. Okay, thanks. Another question? Okay, thank you for your talks. Oh, thank you very much. We have a uh, reward for you.